Well, welcome to another RDWorks Learning Lab. Today is going to be a very short session because what I want to do is to just introduce you to a strange phenomenon that is going to be part of some of the work that we do in the near future. Now, although I did notice this effect while I was messing around with dotting, it could have quite a significant effect on some of the things that we're going to push dotting to in the future, some of the materials that we're going to work with. And it certainly opens up my mind to the possibility that maybe you can do photographic work with grayscale. From the very narrow tests that I did, I concluded that grayscale was only good for one thing, and that was for 3D engraving. Well, as I said, I might have to change my mind on that. So what we're going to do today is a little demonstration of one of the features that could come into play when we're looking at graphics in the future. Now, on this program here, I've got a very simple pattern of about seven lines. Basically, what I'm going to do here is to use the same power to cut every one of these lines. Uh, we've got different speeds on each one of these lines. Okay, now here is the test zone. And what I've got here is a piece of acrylic, my favorite material for telling me what's going on. And across the acrylic, I've got a strip of masking tape. You will notice that I've not got the lens on. Um, I've got my air supply out here, my air assist. And if I don't use my air supply, then what will happen is the vapour from the acrylic will reignite and cause flame. And I don't really want that. What we want to see is just the lines being drawn. But what I would like you to do is to sort of second guess, predict what sort of results we might get by running the lines across here at different speeds. take a good look at these results should we? Okay well as I said we were using 60% power which basically means that what we had coming down onto this work surface here was something like about 50 watts and then we were running this at 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, 75 and 100 millimeters a second and if I put a different contrast background to these lines I think you'll be able to clearly see how as I'm getting faster <clears throat> the lines are actually getting thinner to the extent that when we get to 100 here, there is just a little mark there at the beginning where the beam switched on, but then it disappeared, only to reappear as it went across the masking tape. The question I'm really going to ask you is, can you explain why the width of these is getting narrower as we get faster? Now, although you can't see what's happening with these lines here, um, I will show you what the third dimension looks like on the end of this sheet. It's a U-shaped groove in here that gets shallower on this one and shallower on this one and has virtually disappeared by the time we get to here and it has disappeared onto a flat surface by the time we get to these two here. Now, the question is, why are these lines changing shape? We've got the same power, so you could, you could possibly imagine that the beam would look like this and it would, it would cut grooves in, maybe different depths, but that they would be the same width grooves all the way down. Although it's a parallel beam, there is not an even energy distribution across that beam. The energy distribution across the beam, if I was to draw it, is a graph that looks like that. Now in a previous session I used my little torch here to show you the point that I was trying to make. How the light energy is very very high in the centre of that beam of light but it disappears out to nothing as it gets towards the edge of the beam. 
Well, that's exactly what's happening to the light energy in our parallel beam of laser light. The energy at the centre, the light energy at the centre, is much higher than it is around the edge. And remember what we said about this light energy. And it's not until it hits a surface that the surface structure of that material determines what is happening to the light. If it's a metallic surface, the chances are that most of the light will be reflected off. But if it's a, an organic surface of some sort, the translation from light to heat energy occurs right at the surface of the material. Now you've heard me say many times before that acrylic's a fantastic material because it does not burn. When it's impinged upon by heat, it evaporates. And what happens, the light energy hits the surface, turns to heat, and evaporates the material, scouring it away. And as it scours it away, then it frees up more material to be scoured away. But the point is, the shape of this scouring away is basically telling us what the energy density is in this light beam. Because where it's scoured away more is the highest energy density that's hitting the surface and the most amount of heat. If the beam was standing still, we would burn a hole. A hole that size, which would be nearly the size of the beam itself. And when I say nearly the size of the beam itself, that depends on the material that we burn the hole into. And let's just go back to these cuts again. Because what I want you to see here, and it's one of the reasons why I put the masking tape on here, was that the masking tape burns and scorches at a different power level to the acrylic. The masking tape is more sensitive to heat than the acrylic because look we've run out of power to burn the acrylic surface here but we haven't run out of power to burn the masking tape surface so there's still power in that beam it's just that the material that we've chosen to burn is more resistant to burning than masking tape and we can demonstrate that as we go up here because if we look at each one of these burns we shall see that not only have we got the burn width running through the masking tape, we've got a scorch mark which is wider than the burn in every one of those instances. But it's only the energy density at the centre of this beam here which can generate high enough temperatures when it hits the surface to evaporate the material. But in these outer lower energy density regions here, there isn't enough energy to evaporate the acrylic, but there is enough energy to scorch the masking tape. The whole point that I'm making here is that as we get faster and faster and faster, the beam appears to be shrinking in size, which is a great asset for us when we're trying to do fine, high-resolution engraving. But what we've demonstrated today is that at zero speed, we would be able to cut maybe nine millimeters diameter. But as we start increasing speed, we start moving down this energy profile and so we're, once we get to a certain critical speed we drop off the end of the profile and we can't even use the energy that we've got to mark the material because the material damage threshold exceeds the energy density of the beam itself. But the reason why I've done this without the lens in is because when we put the lens in I'm asking the question, what is it that actually happens? If I take a telescope and look at the moon, yeah, the moon gets closer. If I turn the telescope round, the moon gets further away. It becomes just a small pinprick of light on the other end of the telescope. But it's still a very small, compact, detailed version of the moon. It isn't a uniform white blob of light. And that's the point that I'm really trying to make here. When we put this energy density profile through the lens, it just becomes magnified. And effectively, what we get is this. We've got the same profile of energy, but it's only 0.1 diameter at the theoretical spot size. But if that's 0.1, what is it down here? And that's the question that I'm really going to be leaving you with.
That's where my mind is going at the moment. Look, we have the potential for getting a mark on our material which is smaller than the theoretical spot size. Now what set me off on this train of thought were two things. I've seen some amazingly high resolution work done with anodized aluminium. And I have to ask myself the question, how is that possible? I've been working with my dots and spots in organic materials. And with organic materials, we burn a spot and we burn a mark around the outside of the spot as well. So we get a scorch mark because it's an organic material as well as a burn mark for the hole. So it's virtually impossible with organic materials to get something anywhere near or even smaller than the scorch mark, than the spot size. But when you're talking about harder materials, much harder materials, then you do not get scorching around the outside of the material. And this is where we get the possibility of maybe being able to produce a dot or a mark which is smaller than the theoretical spot size of the lens. So it's got fascinating possibilities which I'm looking forward to exploring. So I did warn you it was going to be a short session today and I'm afraid we don't have an exact conclusion, only possibilities of where we might go in the future. So thank you very much for your time and I'll catch up with you in the next session.